So first things first, the phone rings. The phone literally just started ringing. Oh my Jesus, how Oh, That is why all landlines should be banned forever. <sighs> anyway, I want to make a statement. I like graphic novels and I feel as though to a lot of people that's still a controversial statement especially at my school if I ever mention a graphic novel that I've read that I liked people sort of go <laughs> you mean a comic book and I'm like no the clue is in the word novel <laughs> so I'm going to talk about Blankets by Craig Thompson um, it was published almost 10 years ago now it was in like the wave of graphic novels that kind of proved that graphic novels could be good I read somewhere that the reason he started writing it is because he wanted to capture how it felt to like to fall asleep with someone for the first time and then it sort of grew into a memoir almost an autobiography of his sort of late teenage years and his first serious relationship and also his loss of faith as you can tell it's a pretty hefty book and it also was quite expensive it cost £30 at my local bookshop. I got it for £20 because I have a loyalty card. You could tell I'm cool. It's quite an investment, which I think is justified because much more, obviously much more than normal books, it is a work of art. Despite its size and its length, it is easily read in one sitting. I sat down to read it in December actually when it was very cold. I can't remember whether there was snow outside. I've since reread it several times and it is, as its name suggests, quite a comforting read. It's not that it's incredibly happy, and in fact most things go wrong, but it's it's full of honesty and it's full of empathy. Something that ties in with that is the artwork. Generally the drawings are relatively simplistic in a way that some graphic novels aren't, and in a way that means you're not distracted by the artwork, you sort of forget that you're reading it if that makes sense, you just become immersed in it, which I have felt with some other graphic novels doesn't happen because it's so abstract or forced or sort of plays around with the concept of it being a graphic novel. This doesn't do that, this is quite straightforward, which I think works for the story that he's trying to tell. Having said that, the artwork is beautiful and the reason I initially bought it is because I saw a picture of one of the pages on Tumblr, just like as an image posted on Tumblr, and I thought it was so beautiful and I looked at the tags and found that it was from a graphic novel and looked it up and then ordered it from my local bookshop like within 10 minutes of seeing the picture. But having said all those things, it does have its flaws. It is written almost entirely from personal experience and you do kind of feel as though it never hits its stride in the way a, a normal novel would in that it's written from the point of view of a teenager and his perspective never widens, it is told as he remembered it as a teenager and I hate to say this, speaking as a teenager, but I think most of us are kind of self-centred and we kind of are blinkered in our perspective of the world and so this book doesn't feel as though it has another message, it just feels like an honest portrayal of a relationship which obviously has its values, but it kind of felt as though you'd finished it and you thought, that was a nice story there is nothing more to be said than that story. It was almost like an anecdote in book form. But, to contradict myself again, this narrow perspective is balanced almost by the storyline where he's losing his faith, or questioning his faith, and then he does eventually lose it. And that is a very interesting perspective because he was raised as a devout Christian, like, you know, he knew the Bible back to front. And then as he loses his faith, it's in a very reluctant way and one of my favourite pages actually in the book is the sequence where the only text really is bible verse and he's talking about the reliability of it and how it was changed and edited so he wasn't sure how he could trust the bible to be the word of god. So yeah it's really immersive to read, it's a really nice comfort read and it's kind of it's a nice book to have on your bookshelf because it's so beautiful but it's pretty pricey and it's not it's really probably not the kind of book that's going to stick with you for long. I mean, I'm probably, I'm not going to still be thinking about this book in two years' time. So the way forward with this one is get someone to buy it for you as a present. Because then, you know, no one loses. Simon, I have yet to see it, and I know I won't be able to see it for at least a week, if not more, which just pains me so much. Um, but, oh, Avengers. Jake, I think you should review Blunderbuss, because I know you don't particularly like it, and you don't really want to listen to it but I think you should because I think it's fabulous and I think you need to understand that Blunderbuss is flawless.